All right, John. Well, uh, how you doing, man? What's uh, going on in the life of John Donovan right now? <laughs> uh, not much different than a lot of other people, I'm sure, you know. Um, trying to do some work from home, getting some good family time, uh, trying to play referee during uh, school hours. And other than that, it's all good. <laughs> I love it. Well, um, I know you're back in Jacksonville, but um, you, know, you did have a few months here in the Northwest. How are you um, assimilating to the Northwest? You got your favorite little restaurant, your parts of town, your coffee shop. Or are you digging it being an East Coast guy? Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up in uh, New Jersey, right outside New York. My parents grew up in the city, so I was in New York a lot. So I, I like the city atmosphere. So I like, uh, you know, being able to be around activity and Think a lot of things going on, places to go, whatnot. But you know, the neat thing is you got the mountains in the background, which I'm not used to, which is which is pretty neat. To, yeah. Where you can get away, you know, if you wanted to, and check out that, you know, part of town and all that stuff. So it's been it's been fun. Awesome. Um, I think Husky fans would love to know a little about uh, the interview process. Um, you know, Jimmy took his time. He found his guy. He was very diligent. Um, but what, what was it about, you know, and vice versa, you, you're trusting Jimmy, Jimmy's trusting you, you know, to make you come back to college football and move all the way across the country. Tell us a little bit about that, that interview process. Um, well, he, he gave me a call. Um, you know, he, he, I think he was looking for a certain style. Um, I had the experience in college before I was in the NFL. I think he kind of wanted a combination of that. So there was some guys on his list that he had or whatnot. So he called me up. It was just a meet and greet, get to know you type of deal. And then called again, talking more about philosophy and, you know, how it looks and, and whatnot. And then, you know, like you said, he took his time. And I yeah. wasn't expecting much at all. I just talking. And third time around, we did it again, a little more detail. And said, why don't you come out here for a day and you know, I'll put you through the ringer and, and go from there. So that's kind of what happened. So after the third time talking on the phone, I went out there and spent the entire day out there, checked out everything. Um, you know, I think, you know, he made some calls on me from people he knows that I happen to work with or know me and, you know, got some decent reviews. So that helped a little bit probably. And, and uh, you know, went out there and did the interview and, and, and it went well. And I kind of liked it out there too and liked his vision, <laughs> yeah. and how he saw it, you know. So I think that was a big part of it. Um, we saw it the same way and, and um, you know, I wouldn't have left for – just any job. I've had some opportunities before that I haven't even gone any further in, but this one's a little different. I mean, it's a, it's historically a great program, great school, great city. Um, even being an East Coast guy, I've always known about it and respected it from afar. And then being in the profession in college, you know, you know about it. And, and it's got, uh, like I told our guys and I've told a couple of people, it's got the reputation of being a tough program, which, which I really admire. And uh, to be a part of it's, you know, a great opportunity. Yeah. So you, you said you've been in college football a long time, Vanderbilt, Penn State. Now four years with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, what will you take away, you know, from that NFL experience as you come back to college football more than anything? Um, you know, you, you, you're always learning or you always hope to learn. And I've learned a lot in the, in the four years I was there. I was able to work under a few different coordinators and see how they do it and why they do it. And um, the thing I'll take away with, I think that I really got the appreciation for understanding um, concepts in both the run and pass game and being true to those concepts and um, being able to run whichever ones are best first the team that you're playing. Mm -hmm. And then being able to mix up how you're presenting them from week to week, mm -hmm. and, uh, but still being good at what you run on a consistent basis because that's the key, the guys being able to know what they know but being able to change it up just enough where it's presented in a different way. Sure. So just, um, I, I just, I, I really believe in, in understanding concepts more than plays. And when guys understand concepts, they'll be able to do it in different spots. And that gives you, you know, different personnel or whatnot. And that, and that gives you an advantage without, you know, having to recreate the wheel each and every week. Right. Um, you know, it's funny. You first get here to, to Seattle I think there's a, a couple of different ways to look at this. Are, are you one of these coaches that, you know, you put on the, the tape right away from last year to, to learn about the players, study the personnel? Or are you one of these coaches that like, you know, I think I'm just going to 
Wade, I don't want to watch these guys in some other scheme. I want a clean slate before I start evaluating these guys. You know, where, where do you fall on that spectrum? I definitely want a clean slate. You know, I want everyone to know that there's an opportunity for everybody there. And, and I'm coming in not knowing anything on anybody. And what I see is, is what I'll make my decisions off of. That was, that was my initial, you know, mindset going in. Yeah. Um, I did create a, a sort of a playbook as far as inform general information and how we call defenses and whatnot and uh, the run schemes and the pass schemes and the protection schemes. And I spent a lot of time on that. I did happen to have some film throughout the years that I was able to show the staff that we have. And then as that went on, there were some things that the guys on the staff now that did things in previous stops or there at UW that maybe made sense for what we do or was very successful for them. So that's when I kind of had an opportunity to see some guys that have played here on the team. Um, but I didn't come in right out the gate trying to make any um, you know, evaluations of guys off of what, what happened in the past. Gotcha. And then speaking of this playbook, you kind of went into detail a little bit there. But I think, yeah, that's what Husky fans are most excited about. They've, they've heard from Jimmy about being this pro-style attack. Uh, we're hearing from you now, right? It's, it's about concepts, not plays. Keeping it simple. This offense will be easier for, for guys to come in or even learn in a first year. You just want to get, get guys going, getting them, getting them acclimated as quick as you can. That's got to be one of your biggest challenges here, especially without spring ball, probably a limited fall camp. You're, you're going to make this thing so guys can learn it right away, it sounds like. Yeah, everyone's got to speak the same language. I mean, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. They got, they got to learn new language. I mean, a lot of the run game is probably um, – there's, there's only so much you can do in the run game. You can present it different ways, but there's certain schemes that the run game um, has that, you know, a lot of people run, and there's not too much more inventing going on with that. Um, I think the biggest thing, you know, in that – in the run game is just, you know, being hard nosed and being able to run when you want to run and when you have to run when it's, when, when it's critical situations, short yardage, four minute, when you have a lead, those kind of things is when you really want to run it um, and have to run it. Um, I think in the past game, and like you said, it's, it's very concept based um, and have different variations within the concept, but also um, the timing of the quarterbacks big within those concepts. No one, um, when to get rid of the ball. I mean, his eyes should tell him where to throw it, but his, his feet should tell him when to throw it, things like that. Um, that'll be, you know, there won't be many, much gray area as far as when he should be getting rid of the ball or who he should be throwing it to. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of quarterbacks, certainly the talk of the town is going to be the quarterback competition. And uh, certainly you've got some talented kids in there. All three of them, uh, well, there's four now with the, with the walk-on. But all these guys, big-time high school recruits, four-star guys, um, you know, are they doing their best Peyton Manning impersonation on the chalkboard <laughs> in these virtual meetings right now to impress you? Uh, yeah. you know, what is it this guy's going to have to do uh, for John Donovan in the short time to be the starting quarterback for the Huskies hopefully this fall? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, they're probably, you know, the best example of not having any preconceived notions of anybody on our roster. They haven't played at all. Um, not, you know, they've, they've practiced some people have some general thoughts on them, but other than that, they're, you know, they're all you know, pretty inexperienced college wise. So, you know, they're getting as much of a clean slate as anybody really. Um, and all I can base my evaluations are on right now is what they've, what I've seen. So, I've been able to see him run around a little bit when we had our drills and whatnot. Um, that's the only thing I've been able to see him do physically. Um, Don't you get to throw a towel him. during OTAs? Yeah, you can't, you can't throw a ball, use a ball, you can't do any of that. So I haven't even seen him throw. So it's like, <laughs> we'll just so, make this transition easy for you, you know? Why not? Hopefully at one point we'll get one out there. Yeah. Um, but uh, they've all been pretty good in the classroom. They've all been diligent. They, they – Worked at it. They got great questions when they don't know the answer. They're not afraid to ask the question. And they've been able to pick up, you know, what we're trying to put in. Um, you try to, you know, ask questions, see how much they know, how fast they can think through situations. Because um, that's the biggest thing, as you know, being able to process information quickly and make a decision. It's all about decision making and being able to process the information that you see and make the decision as fast as you can make it. So 
that's the thing that I think is hard to tell right now as, as well as them not being able to throw it. So the guys that can, I think they all can, they all have a pretty good understanding of the general stuff we're putting in, but the actual application of it is the thing that we need to see on the field. And that's uh, something we haven't had a chance to do yet. So whoever can do that the best is the guy that gives us a chance to win that makes good decisions, makes decisions quickly, gets us in the right play, goes to the spot, right spot with the ball, that kind of stuff. I mean, that's, that's how we'll evaluate who's going to play going forward. Well, can't wait to get to that competition. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it will. Uh, yeah, um, I guess last for you, you know, you've been, been away from college football for four years, you're coming back to it. Anything changed? Um, how's the recruiting going or is that – you know, maybe that's the one thing uh, you didn't miss in the NFL. <laughs> you got to get back into and deal with these quarterback dads. Uh, <laughs> now, how, how is recruiting going? It's going well. It's going well. We, uh, you know, that's the one of the things, like I said, go, coming to a place like this, it's, it's not a hard sell. So, you know, you got to do a good job evaluating. You got to, you know, try to, you know, see what, what you want in a guy, not only on the tape, but, you know, off the field and uh, make sure that he's the guy that's going to be the leader of your team because he's the guy that is going to be, you know, at the forefront, you know, so a good attitude and a good work ethic uh, on and off the field is big and then evaluating the tape. So, so from there, you know, I don't think you have to sell the school or the, or the program or the city or the, anything else, you know, if, if they got a feel for it, which they should, I don't think that's, a, that's hard. Um, so that's been, that's been good. I mean, some of the rules have changed a little bit in recruiting, which has been a little different. <laughs> the, right. You know, text guys and stuff now. It took me a while to really believe that. I had to ask a few times, <laughs> are we sure we're going to do this? But, you know, that, that's, that's been a little bit of a change. But other than that, it hasn't been too much. I think the guys being younger as far as just coming back um, from the NFL, um, it kind of hits you a little bit how, how young they are, but how eager they are and how willing they are to learn and want to play and want to you know what it takes and and all that stuff so that's that's been refreshing to be honest um, and uh, I've really enjoyed that part of it just being around those guys that have you know they're still trying to make their mark and, and yeah and so that's, that's awesome 